Welcome BBCs to episode number 145 of the Broken by Concept podcast, the number one solo queue motivational podcast. Speaking of motivation, Curtis, process, improvement, we're going to dive straight in today. A video that was sent to us, it's probably been recommended on a lot of your YouTube feeds as well, especially if you listen to probably a podcast like this, about chess. Title of this video is how I accidentally went from zero to 2000 in chess in two years. I just looked up some context of what that means. Let's say, you know, because obviously this is a League of Legends podcast. So uh, 2000 ELO is about is about top 2% of the player base in chess on chess.com, which is obviously where everyone plays. And but people were saying that it probably is a little bit higher because there's lots of bot accounts and apparently there's like MMR cheaters and that sort of stuff. So we're probably talking about the top 1.5%, which is we're talking about like mid diamond, I would say. Okay. So, so that's going from true beginner, true beginner to about mid diamond. And it was two years. Yep. In two, two years. years. Now, um, I really recommend that you guys, do you think they should watch that video first and then our discussion? I think so. I, I do think so. I mean, mm. you don't have to. I don't think you have to. You don't have to. If you, I, I think it would be good though, but it's not really necessary. You know, this story I think is amazing because no matter where you are in your rank journey, if you are a gold player, if you're a beginner, if you're a diamond player, this video is going to inspire you in some way, shape or form. And there's so many parallels to this journey uh, in reference to league and the solo queue journey and what it entails. And I think there's a lot we can learn. Everyone can learn from this. And now that we've, you know, we're doing our below gold program and we see how hard it is. We see what it's like. We're seeing it. We're on the battlefield right now <laughs> working with below gold clients and true beginners. Uh, it's, it's really, really awesome to see what someone, what is actually capable, what's, what people are capable of if you put your mind to something and you have a process and you actually break shit down. Um, where do you want to start, Nathan, with this one? Uh, the other thing I'll mention as well is that she, so much of the the thing that struck me because we don't know we don't know anything about chess, no. guys. We're also true beginners in chess. Yep. I don't know a single opening. You know how to play though, right? I know what the pieces do. Right? Yeah, so you can play again. I can play again. Yeah, yeah. But it, I, we played against each other one yep. time, and it was and our friend was watching us. Like we're like <laughs> six hundred ELO players. Dude. <laughs> So, but the funny thing is, is that uh, I can, I just, I was just immersed in this video because she's using almost the exact same language. The that same terminology. Use. Very, very similar. So we'll, we'll break it down. We'll get into that. Um, I don't think there's any more context. And the other thing as well, guys, is yeah, just, I, we constantly, this podcast, we try and bring back to other crafts, other disciplines, mm. process, improvement in anything. That's, that's really what we're doing here in the Broken by Concept podcast. But obviously getting learning to learn how to in league, but this applies to everything else. And spot on. And it's very rare as well that people document their journey. Yeah, like I thought this. that was really cool as well. You, you, you imagine the foresight to document your journey from day one, essentially. Like like I, you saw some of her beginner footage of when she was a, essentially a true beginner. And she documented when she went to local tournaments, she documented her entire journey, her ups and her downs. I thought that was so cool. So yeah. smart. Yeah. I would love to see if someone did that in league, like one of our clients who's maybe starting their journey, like doing a full documentation. That'd be so awesome. There's so much value here, guys. That's the thing. Like you making that documentary or whatever, you know, that video, that is like honestly more helpful than a guide that we do. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's just a real, it's real journey. It's real. It's a real journey. You know, it's not just like some professional teaching or sort of stuff. Like I think it's actually more valuable. I've mentioned before uh, with Ishan, mm. um, his journey in Soltu from a genuine gold hard stuck player to hitting master tier in, you know, the span of about a year over just over a year. And I've mentioned before saying that if there's a gold, everyone player that comes in, like, Ishan will be able to actually teach that person quicker because he knows he knows exactly exactly what every barrier that he had to go through, and I haven't done that journey, you no. know. So there's definitely yep. advantages there, definitely uh, for people like this in this story. All right, so I'm just we're just going to go over the video chronologically. Go I over some the notes key here, points, yep. And then whenever key points, you can jump in or whatever, Curtis, and sure. then we can uh, break it down. So her two-year journey started in uh, early 2021. Uh, college she was in, and this is like a really busy semester. She was doing lots of things, and she viewed it as a pure hobby when she started. So she's not serious about it. She was literally just like, I'm just going to play some chess, you know, see what's up. And she didn't really have a goal. No really, goal. Really, 
at the start. She mentioned that she was basically just going to see how high she could get by taking it really casually. Which yeah. I think she said about 1200 ELO. So she started off just learning really basic opening concepts, like the value of each piece and just playing bots, lots of bot games yep. and that sort of stuff. And then the first time she went into a real person game, she got absolutely destroyed. And I've got here, you know, when she was first starting to play, there was a quote here that I literally, it feels like it was pulled from my discord with one of my clients, Unity, Sonia. And it said, I'm, you know, I, I was focusing too much on my pieces Yes. Instead of the opponent's pieces. Mm. That's so, so relatable in League of Legends because that's what I see with, with, especially with the true beginners, iron players. They're focusing so much on what they're doing. Like cl me clicking and clearing my camp or clicking this minion. Like looking they're, at my skill shot shoot out. Looking at my mana and my abilities and everything rather than l absorbing information. That's because your mental stack is 110% overwhelmed. You don't really have the muscle memory there. Um, in this section... There was something she said as well. So her first kind of major burst, right? I don't know if I'm skipping ahead, was the 700 to 1,000. Yep. No, that's where we're going. Okay. To. So there was the 700 to 1,000, right? And 1,000, what is that equivalent to? Is that like, is that like uh, silver or something? Yep. Yeah, about bronze or silver. Bronze, remember, right? Yeah, bronze, silver. And she said that this came largely from just playing a lot of games but not mindlessly. She played a lot of games with intention. Hmm. And this is again, very similar to the advice that I've, and what I've seen working in my program so far is, there is just an element of getting the reps in. You know, and I wanna go on a bit of a tangent here, Nathan, and I'd love to see if you've actually seen something similar. So, you know, this whole, again, below gold thing, it's, it's very different to what we're used to. And you know, with our main programs, the gold to master and stuff like that, we're able to kind of like, when we see a client, we can basically pinpoint their problems and we can kind of compartmentalize them roughly. Like these are these are the kind of the problems they're facing. These are the plat player. This is kind of what they're facing. You could kind of now over time, we've got a pretty good idea of like what you need to do, right? Especially I using the BBC pyramid model from last episode. That's right. Uh, that's a very easy way to break down those mistakes. You can kind of see, yeah. And what I've realized is that I believe now from a true, there is actually three categories or three kind of, um, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, three stages of below gold, okay? I've actually somewhat labeled them. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it up in the air right now. I don't really have to define terms yet. The first one is a true beginner. And a true beginner is a level 30, like someone leveling to 30, as well as iron players. Iron players and level 30 and below level 30 players. These are the true beginners, right? This is characterized with not really having an understanding of how the game works, like not really even understanding all the champions um, or anything like that. They don't have any champ, barely any champion mastery, and they have little to no, basically no understanding of fundamentals. The three things, the three major pillars of below gold, they're missing them all, okay? Yep. Then what happens, I believe, is that as they approach bottom of bronze to about silver four, bronze one, silver, so they're kind of there, there the silver four to bronze one, bronze four there that is what i call like an intermediate beginner and these are the ones what i've noticed is that they now understand the game okay they understand what all the champions do now they understand the items they understand the game they understand what a tower does and how much damage it does they understand they've got a baseline feel for the game but they still don't have champ mastery and they still don't have fundamentals so this is kind of what I, how i interpret she she was in there where she now she's understanding the game but she, she's actually got a feel for the game now, right? And then what happens at Silver 4, there's the next one, there's the last stage to, to go for, is the kind of the, the advanced beginner. Yep. Uh, I would say the the only really category that I've got at the moment is interesting knowing that I haven't really thought mm. about that because I, I don't have that many iron players in my right. below goal yet. But when I have my, like the Silver 2, just watching the way they talk and how they interact Very with the members, right? they're actually really advanced. <clears throat> Very silver advanced. Two, silver 1. So they're the advanced those. beginners, right? And yeah. they're categorized... They, ha they understand like the game, like all the champs and all that stuff, understand the items. They also now are starting to develop champ mastery. They actually have champ mastery, a lot of them, but they're missing fundamentals. And these are the clients that are the easiest to get results for now of what I've realized with teaching them fundamentals. So you actually now, these are the clients that you teach them maybe resets or from a million of resets, wave management, whatever a threat assessment, and basic threat assessment, warning leading, and boom, they're the ones that get to gold with those fundamentals. Now, I didn't realize 
uh, that below silver four, I was teaching bronze players fundamentals, which is not what you want to do. You start you, with champion. You start with champion and champion mastery. And below that, you don't teach fundamentals or champion mastery. You teach the game. And how do you teach that game? You get them playing a bulk amount of games and get them asking basic questions about how champs interact. So that it's interesting. I'm, I'm kind of looking at this journey, this 700, 1,000 you know, little journey here through that lens. And, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not setting that in stone for my blog. That's kind of my framework that I'm working with right now and what I've observed so far, but it seems pretty accurate. And you can see very clearly a silver, yeah, right. Silver three, silver two are extremely different to a bronze three, bronze two. Very, very different. Yes. In fact, yes. Um, does that resonate at absolutely. all? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. And that's, that's purely, I, I haven't actually seen too much of their gameplay because I'm just working on the champion mastery stuff. I'm just, I just purely observe just the way they talk in the discord. I can already tell. Yeah, you can literally see by the quality of the question straight yeah. up. What are they saying? And I've actually more figured this out by us talking to the ones that have gotten results. Talking to all the guys that have gotten, uh, people that have gotten gold in my program. Like what? Like what? And it's, it's always a, it's like a very common trend right now. It's like, Oh yeah, it was just like resets and wave management or something like that. But then you look at these bronze ones and like they're not that's not working at all. And I'm like, oh okay. And then I'm starting to, you know, put two and two yep. together, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I have a question for you here, Curtis. Mm. She mentioned here, this might be the difference between chess and league. Because I feel like chess, chess, the feedback's like really quick, right? It's just an individual game, one v one. You just you know that you, you obviously there's huge gaps in your knowledge and things to learn. Mm. She said that she would, she would, even though she was, it was a hobby for her, she still was playing with intention when she started from like 700 to the thousand. She mentioned that in the video, right? She was yeah, playing she with said intention. was playing with intention. She wasn't playing mindlessly. I think that's really important. And what do you think about this? Like, let's say if there's, I think there's a difference with a league player just playing with their friends and just jumping on and sort of learning the game slowly through muscle memory and just yeah, playing. Let's, let's explore that. It's a very tricky one because. Or should you like playing with intention from the get go as a beginner? Like, you're really thinking about why did I do like ability usage? Why did I die there? Why does that champion do all like, well, the damage? Look, I'm going to say it and uh, look, I will frame it in a different way. I, I think that there is an, okay. There's a fine line here, right? Cause, Cause I we think, talk about fun as well, right? Yeah. And just so yeah. jumping in, just being a child and fucking around, right? The <laughs> yeah, whole fucking around, around thing, right? That we mentioned That might before. be more important for league than chess. I, I, I think that, um, there is a, there is a, there's a lot to be said about, fucking around and having fun. I think that's so important. Like really, really important for mental like clarity and getting the reps in. If you're not having fun and you feel like you're overcomplicating things, you know, you're probably going down the wrong route, but you still need to play with somewhat intention. You should be still trying to win. Cause like when I, when I hear the word mindless, right? That's literally feet up on the chair, sipping a drink, you know. Taking every fight you see. Literally, the, the, like, I go, just I go, in, I go. And not really in. caring about your life or, yeah. at all. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I think, yeah, I'm trying to think back. And again, I don't have a great memory of how I was thinking when I played, but I'm I pretty, think that, I think that we- I was trying to win. We were, comp we're competitive gamers, because We definitely, when we play, we play with the intention. I want to beat the enemy opponent. And I'm always figuring out, okay, that didn't work. Yeah. That didn't work. But it that wasn't, didn't it work. wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't, we weren't really trying to get better though. I don't think when we, we we were trying to win, yeah. But it wasn't with the intention to get better, was it? Ooh, it's a good question. I never, I, I don't think I ever framed it like that with me. It was like I had fun. I just had a shit. No, I, fun. I definitely, I wanted to win, but I didn't want to get better because yeah. I, I was, I was with my World of Warcraft friends. I had no intention of playing yeah. the game competitively or ranked. That's right. And it was like a thing. I didn't we give a shit Twisted about the game. Tree line. Yeah, we're just dicking around playing Twisted Tree Line yeah. and summon random summon rift and yeah, random stuff. Right, Dominion. I played a shit ton of Dominion. I was just playing for fun, hmm. but I was still trying to win. I remember I was sweating playing Dominion. Like, <laughs> yeah. So people probably don't even know what Dominion is. No. Maybe the old school gamers, but Dominion was like a game mode. It was kind of like a... It's like a capture, capture the, the flag or capture yeah, the point or whatever. To capture points. Was, and I don't you know got, why they got rid of it. It was awesome. It was, it was so cool. fun. I think, there was, I think a lot of the community were upset when it was gone. I love Dominion. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so it's a fun... It's kind of like an ARAM fun mode. And I was trying my ass off. I, I would get angry like yeah. sometimes losing a Dominion game. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like thinking about where's the next point where they're going to go next. Yeah, I was like, trying on it. Okay, I, I'm, I'm weak. I need to play my own <laughs> spikes here. Well, I don't know that far, but it was more like yeah, I was no, just I didn't trying to win. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so that's what that's how I interpret that. Like she's trying to win. Okay. That's, that's I think, I mean, that's a pretty fair assessment. I don't, we don't really know what it's like inside of her mind. Um, she might be a type of person as well that's just like analytical from the get go. She's just potentially. Like a, well, she seems like that just yeah. with, with this whole yeah with this video because because you know you know we you do see like lots of high level players like the really talented players 
and they're not analytical at all or certain roles and you're just mm. like how is this like 14 year old kid like challenger mm. you know what i mean and that's just like that's where talent intuition i sort of stuff comes in so i and, and and again like i don't even want to i don't want to i don't want to use the word talent i don't like going down that rabbit no, hole but i do that's think just, that's i guess that's just not what our podcast is no. sort of aimed at this is for someone that's like but the average person what i would say is that i i do think that those kids or those people that are more intuitive tend to have an easier time picking up league just from what we've noticed right um i think that's fair to say yeah that's right all right so moving on here so yeah she said uh her early success primarily came from just playing a lot yep. of bot games a lot of games and she used the word not mindlessly playing and she was intentional about everything we talked mm. about that all right, and then um, she thought, okay, the peak level that she could get to was 1,200 without putting in a lot of work, and that's what she got to. She got to 1,200, got to without, 1200. without, in her mind, putting in a lot of work. It's like silver, in silver somewhere, right? Low yeah. silver or something. Um, then, this is, this is, let's explore this now. Then she had a flick, a switch. So she said that, but she was like, oh, this is really funny. She started thinking about it all the time. When you start thinking about anything all the time, you're entering serious stage. Mm. Uh, so she started to, so she flipped the switch she switched from it becoming a hobby into something she really wants to improve and learn in I think this switch is is really important like when you really focus on something what like what change like obviously it's like obvious like well you know you focus on it but like everything sort of changes in terms of like you view the mm. game like yeah it's more um Again, you only see solutions when you active. You actually, you're, you're only going to find solutions if you actively see things as problems. That's kind of the way I interpret that, right? Like, let's say you randomly set your goal. Or like she says, I randomly wanted to. Was it the Operation Two Thousand? Right. 2000, so she yeah. wanted to get two thousand Elo, right? When you're in that mindset and you're actively trying to get better, when you die, you're now seeing that as a problem. You're now kind of subconsciously or intuitively looking for a solution rather than if that if you're not trying to get better and you don't have a goal it's like a death is a death and you just move on mm. so i think that you're more it's like your brain is more attuned to looking for a solution at all times and i think over the long run yeah you're just better at finding solutions and yeah yep. i guess okay. so i guess that's so that's your definition yeah, of the way I what the it. switch is yeah i don't really have one eh? Mm. like finding solution yeah it's more about a level of care. Yeah. A level, a level of care. Of care and this is where it like losing like gets to the, like I'm going to figure out, like I'm just going to figure it but out. But I think for her, what I, I don't know if I butchering this, but she said something around like, she kind of felt like, you know, something was possible. Like after she said, like she got to that 1200, I think it unlocked. It was like, oh wow. I just climbed from a tr like an actual beginner. I'd never played chess before to, I'm now 1200. Oh, wow. Interesting. What does that mean? Like, what, what does that mean in terms of what's capable? Yeah. And what's next? Like, what, what, yeah, what am I capable of? I feel like it unlocks something in her is what she said, like something along those lines. Um, so I think she had this belief and I think that that is a testament to her as a person. I think she had a lot of self-confidence going into this. Like, oh, wow. I think I could do this. Like there was that, I think I, there was like a blind faith. I think I could do this. Like she set this ambitious goal. And she's like, I think I could do it, right? And I think that's very important. I think it's important. I think that there's definitely lots of people in our programs or in the community that they sort of want the goals, but they don't have that belief. They don't like, yeah. They or they, yeah, they beat themselves down, and yeah. yeah, they don't really have that. I guess um, this is where the narratives of like, I'm just not a talented gamer. Like, the she kids... seemed to fight that. She seemed to fight that really, really well. Which is, uh, you remember, we talk about that all the time in terms of reducing self sabotage. I think she'd done a really great job of minimizing self sabotage. Yeah. She had very minimal self sabotage. Yeah. Like she didn't talk about like, oh, you know, I, you know, self doubt. I've dad, never played chess before. Like all these, she, like, there's not one thing she said. It. It's like there's people been playing chess for for you know decades. How can I compare to others? No, at all no. The entire video. It's just, it's just to the point. She just really got but down I think, to it. Again, she? this all stemmed from the fact that she was having fun. Yeah. She was obsessed about yeah. the game. She genuinely had fun. Like it wasn't about anyone else. It was a hobby for her. And she knew it was a hobby and she knew what she was getting out of it. You know, like I think she had intention again. I think that's the key word here. She had intention. She had belief and she knew what chess meant to her. Like it was a fun hobby. Mm. There's just really no stage four issues there, is there? Well, there was limit. She does have a little bit of a tilt section later on. Yeah. Maybe we'll get to that later, but in terms of like big picture when well, she's and learning. I'm sure she had them but she seems like she was on top of them she just dealt with it yeah which was really cool yeah 
Actually, one thing I will say here, which was interesting, she also made a comment about that chess for her was really lonely. Yeah. Like sitting alone in your room, just grinding online chess. And that's something we don't talk about with, with League. It is a, it is a bit of a low, can be, doesn't have to be because there's online communities and stuff and, but in the Discord communities and stuff, but it, it it is a bit of a lonely The improvement journey, process it? itself, the queuing up the plane. And watching the your VODs. And most of the time, you are going to be spending it alone. It's pretty even a if lonely you're journey, yeah. Years. It's really important to be aware that that is the case, I think. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people, uh, you know, you let's say, I think a lot of people, they, they join our programs for like the accountability sort of section. She seemed to be very good at self-motivating and that sort of stuff. And she went out of her way to go to like local tournaments and get out of her you know, her, her house and her room to meet people and play in person. And I think that probably that shift in her environment probably was quite big for her as well. Cause I think, you know, the, the, the equivalent of that with yeah with league is talking to other like-minded individuals yeah. on discord That's the and joining our community joining our community or having some sort of friendship yeah. group where you're actually like trying to you're, you're surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals i think for chess and being able to see people in real life is that next level though i mean there's a real life community like that is always going to be yeah infinitely yeah better and you can literally yeah because you're changing your there. actual environment as well which i think is actually huge mm. so i think there's something there that potentially helped her right potentially that maybe that's even a easier job than league now that i think about it the physical aspect physical of element. it you know you literally you get to like see your opponent as mm. well like you know she was like you know because obviously they have real tournaments and you're against other 800 elo players or whatever i think she was 900 elo in her uh, in her local tournament because you have like an online rating, rating and then in a real life, real life rating. rating yeah and she mentioned when she first as well went to in-person events she had just an increased mental stack distractions mm. And all that sort of stuff. So it's again just emphasizing the mental stack, guys. You can think that you're, a, you know, just probably was really confident. I'm 1300 ELO online, and then in reality, in the real life, 900. Because again, it's a different sort of game in a way. Um. All right. So then, yep. So then, this is where she goes into the Operation 2000. So this is it. We're making the switch. We're flicking the switch. Let's go. And this is where the process started, right? Yep. She mentioned about uh, sometimes she felt like she would play at like a 1600 level mm. and then she'll be playing at like an 800, 800 ELO level. This is this is the way that I view ranked in the rank ladder. When, when someone says like I'm a platinum four player, for example, what that tells me actually is that you have some games that like you're like playing platinum two and maybe even platinum one, but you have your gold four games. Like, and then that creates your rank, your aggregate. Because a lot of people, let's say... Um, especially when they played like it was really mechanically high mechanical players. Let's say like mid, we always talk about Yasuo and Katarina and stuff like that. They can trick themselves really easy that they're higher ELO than you are. Because let's say they're like mechanic max is like, oh, wow, I'm actually doing this pretty close to like what pro players do. But then they play in like their fundamentals and that sort of stuff. They're like gold four level and that's making their rank platinum four. But those players are really good at tricking themselves that they're just permanently platinum two because they have those standout mechanics. But that can also come at a benefit, right? If you are delusional about your level of play, it does, yes. it's a positive and a negative. So the positive being you're really hyper confident. And that's going to help you with your execution, right? You're like going to believe that you can execute all these things flawlessly. But the downside is that, yeah, sometimes you can be too delusional. That won't allow you to get into the details and yeah. see what's really leading to your inconsistencies. Yeah, we, and we've covered that before with the bell curve, right? We have the, the left-hand side of the bell curve representing kind of all the, the, the shit fundamentals, essentially, or the poor basic mistakes that we're making. And then on the right-hand side of the, the, the bell curve, we have kind of like the great plays you're making. But both of them are kind of, you know at the edges of the bell curve but the majority of your decisions are falling in that middle bracket which is kind of representing your level of play yeah that's right so um, yeah I, I like again it's just so so spot I like that on. she said she had a, a thousand um she had a a thousand uh no a low skill floor that's what she said a low skill floor she had an 800 elo tactical blunders yeah. even though she was like 1400 1400 or something yeah and which is again very very same as league. Same as league. We see that all the time. A platinum player is going to have a lot of the time gold four level certain fundamentals, and then, like you said, platinum one D four level high highs. Even mechanical just even just certain mis mechanical mistakes, right? Just like missing like an yeah. easy skill shot, or just like a death to a gank or something like that. And, and I love what she said here. She ice. She focused on 
increasing her skill floor. She focused on what, you know, those tactical blunders. She, she tried to cut out the really basic stuff. Yeah. So, like, well, yes. so how can I stop lo- making those basic mistakes? And I think that's such a great thing to Way do. Way to think about it. It's yeah. such a great thing to do because yeah, it may not give you that immediate boost in LP and it didn't. I don't think it actually did give her an immediate, I think she plateaued for quite a while here around 1500, right? But again, that sets you up in the long run because that's the thing that's going to prevent you in the long run from climbing. So that's going to, I guess, level up your level of consistency. That's why we talk about improving your fundamentals, especially on gold. I guess it's really easy to get in. Like I'm 1300 ELO and now I need to learn like 2000 ELO concepts, but you got to go back. It's like, no, I need to polish up those 800 ELO those blunders. And that's also, very, it's interesting because we... I don't know if you've had clients like this, but you work with a client in gold or like whatever, and you do a bunch of stuff with them going over fundamentals. They're not really getting anywhere. And then one day they come back and they're just killing it and they just stomp and they climb up a shit ton of ELO. That's because they put in that hard work. Yeah. They worked on those fundamentals. But that but working on those fundamentals without getting results for a long time is brutal. Like yes. that's brutal. That's the fun of Lee. Yeah, <laughs> very, very I brutal. Love. And also what was really interesting, I love the way she mentioned time frames. She was so casual about saying, I was at this rank for six to eight weeks. This is casually. Yep. It was like, I was at, I, it took me six weeks to get from 15 to 1600. Just mm. think about that. Mm. It took me six weeks to store it out there. Six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks, six weeks. Hundred, we'll, we'll get in, she has a process. A hundred elo. Yeah. Right? Just come on guys. If we can be remotely on this level. The time frames really and the, the time frame, the respect for the difficulty of the game. Yeah. She had, she yeah. had that. Well, she, the great thing about that is that we don't have that for league. Chess has been around for you know, uh, you know, forever. It's a much more respected so it's game. So yeah. respected, like yeah. people are really aware it's going to take time. But league is like, oh, it's a computer game. I'm just going to focus, and suddenly I climb. Oh, oh boy, it's just not how it works. And 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 at that fifty, so she plateaued at fifteen hundred, right? Would- I want to first talk about her schedule, her process. Right, yep, yep. So she did she did schedule and process. This is what one of her days looked like, guys. So she was. This is when she's you know she's climbing from you know thirteen, fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred. Tuesday, one hour of puzzles. One hour of rapid games and analysis and one hour of opening studies. So she's literally broken three down. Three hours. It was three hours a day. Three hours a day. She's broken down that three hours. Funny how it's three hours, Curtis. What if it was our three block process? It's about a three hour block, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, kind of. Two, three hours, yeah. I guess. For us, it's three hours. Well, I think there's something later on. So that's more similar to three blocks later on yeah, a okay. journey. This that's is true. more, I think she's more doing puzzles. This is the equivalent, in my opinion, of more playing some games than doing 1v1s, then watching coaching VODs or something. Okay. Right. That's like the way I'm interpreting this anyway. Yeah. All right. So then um, but, she... So what, one thing I will say about this is that this is, again, the advantage of chess comparative to the league. The drilling. The, the, the drilling aspect in chess mm. is so far superior to mm. league. We just don't have that. Like, so from what I can gather, again, I don't really understand specifically what she was doing. She said these things like puzzles and what she was alluding to essentially, it looks like it was a, 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 a basically a chess, a state of a game. It gives you a scenario. And then you got to like, what's the best what's the move, move yeah. right? And... That's the equivalent of league. Like, okay, here's the map state. Here's what you're playing. What's next? This is what we do in our Curtis Clips. That's what we do in Curtis Clips, right? But imagine being able to grind that. Boom, boom. Imagine if you could pick a champion, right? And it's like, okay, you play Rek'Sai. Here's the game state. What do you do? Here's the game state. What do you do? Here's the game state. What do you do? Imagine being able to do that for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you would be... I mean, obviously, like the execution's not there. It would be great if you could play it, right? That would yeah. be the, even better, right? There's a yeah. game state. Here's your yeah, end of the game. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what that. League needs. That's yeah. what it needs because that you're actually executing with chess. You're actually making the move. It's not yeah. like you're just seeing it. You're making the move. So you're building that muscle memory. And she had a thing here about repetition was key. She was building the intuition, which is what kind of what she alluded to there as well. She was, She said it was just getting reps in. She had to get reps in, really see scenarios. She said it wasn't good enough to sit there and figure out the solution. She needed to be able to see the solution and execute upon the solution instantly. Boom, 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 boom. But in League, that takes thousands and thousands of games. That's why it's such a fucking brutal game. Mm. But in, again, chess is, is much easier in that regard. That's going to piss off the chess community, but it's just the reality, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, I love what she then, when she was stuck in the 1500, like she created a why I'm losing document. Yes, I love that. That just went dot point. Like, exactly. This is what's going on. This is the mistakes. This is what's going well, on. Well, what she did specifically, right? She, so, after she lost the game, she said, why I'm losing, right? She, she like, like review it, obviously. And she reviewed a lot of games, right? She started a lot of games. But she would review her own games and then be like, okay, these are the moments I lost. 
She would make a document, write down the, and show the timestamps, whatever it might be. And then she would review this document at the end of the week, which is kind of what we talk about, the weekly end of week reflection. But this is the next level. This is like you going over like, all. this is like basically having all of your timestamps of major mistakes. You've say you made notes of your major problems and then going over and like, oh yeah, that's what's happening. And she said this was able to allow her to see the big picture and see what was going on holistically in her process. Where was she failing? And then she was able to see trends. Now, this is again where I think league and chess can be a little bit different because in chess, um, I mean, at least for her, it looks like she she was really good at being able to identify errors. In league, people struggle with identifying what those key mistakes are. Mm. Now, look, for the most part, you can go over your deaths and I'm sure like as people get better at this, this is possible. But for a lot of like people who are new to reviewing, this is not even feasible. No, it's right? not. Like, this is something that is only possible if you've been reviewing for at least probably six to 12 months. Because yeah. league is just, you don't know where to focus on in the game. That's like one of our just, most common questions. Where do I where direct do I my attention my in the review? Yeah. But obviously chess openings is a really big one. She mentioned openings is a lot. Yeah, she was so. able to like, again, segment her games as well. Like she was looking at ending games and then like openings and then mid games. She would have kind of like parts of her gameplay, which were cool. The why I'm losing document is so important because in terms of her mental, there's no confusion. Hmm. This is one of the biggest problems that we see. And this is why League's so hard is that people are genuinely confused why they're in that rank. And there's so many distractions in so League. So many like distractions. The champs, the meta, the teammates, teammates. the blah, 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 blah bills. whatever it is, the bills. Yeah. The, there can be a million reasons, Complexity. right? But in chess, it's like, well, it's me versus this guy. I made this move. move. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> I lost. You know? <laughs> You know, versus in league, you can make the right move and still lose. And you can still lose. So yeah, the re- exactly. You can't really make the correct move every time and, st- and lose in chess, right? No. I mean, it would probably at best be like a stalemate or something. I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So the, uh, look, I'm not. We're not here to really <laughs> say we chess. Gotta, we got to stop. We don't know shit about chess. We, we don't know shit about comparing. chess again. But we're just again reading between the lines here. All right. So the plateau. Now the break. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about this. So she plateaued at what was the elo? Fifteen hundred. She plateaued at fifteen hundred. Was it? She was frustrated. She actually okay. was frustrated with progress. Yeah. She was frustrated that she had no progress. Yes. And it, 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 didn't she say something about if she, she was... No, one thing she said actually was if her skill didn't translate to real life gameplay, she was actually going to stop playing or something. Uh, I didn't she said something about, about that. But yeah. anyway, we won't talk about that. Yeah, um, yeah so she, she would plateau and then she took a break for four days. Because she felt like she was overthinking things. Overcomplicating. Overcomplicating yes. the game. And she felt like this was great. Shout out Mysterious in the MLA, uh, the other coach. And he is a massive advocate for uh, breaks. And he's actually the one that really brought it to my attention. He's spot on. Breaks are crucial. For clarity. For clarity in your, in your solo queue journey. If you're not taking at least one day off a week, you know, you're going to struggle. You cannot be playing league seven days a week, period. The funny thing is when she came back from her break, she instantly lost. Then, then she started, that's where the clarity kicked in and then she started overcomplicating and things. So I, I, the way I interpret that was that she had rust, boom, that's that few games of rust. And then she climbed and smashed it once mm-hmm. the rust, because she had clarity, she wasn't overcomplicating it. Yeah, the break's really important. It's just really important, guys, for us to identify when we, we really need to break. And what she was, what she said specifically, she said, when I was in that plateau, I was overthinking openings. So she, she was like thinking about like all these openings, right? And the way I kind of compare that to league, it's it's like your uh, your early game and you're like overemphasizing the early game. Mm. And then, whereas you can still win in the mid game and like having that kind of comfortability or that feeling like, oh, okay, it's fine. I made a mistake in the early game. I can still win. Like that I think is a really like a, a good, because sometimes when you're playing a lot of league and you have a few rough early games, you're like, okay, I really got to have a good early game now. I really can't miss these CS. If I miss the CS, my game... Fucked. You're just in your head, and, and then, then you're thinking too yeah, much about the you're early tunneled game. Tunneled on one thing. Yeah, you're just getting tunnel vision. Yeah, you just got to be open and f- free flow. And then you forget about what the big picture of the game is, and then maybe you even forget about your champ identity at that point because you're just thinking about CS in all the time, mm. not dying to ganks. I have a question here, Curtis. A bit of a segue here. You know, I mean, so you mentioned there about you want one day a week off. Mm. What about bigger breaks? Like, how do you know when you're like plateau plateaued? Right. Because we talk about time frames, this is where it gets a confusing. Yeah, right? like like multiple day breaks. Well, I'm actually very careful about give, telling people to do more than like two or three days. I feel like more than two or three days in, in, in league specifically 
is a bit iffy. But actually, we need to be very careful here because she went on those break days. She was actually still doing her drills. You do do it. That's true. Yes, yeah, right? she's still studying. The she game. was actually doing those puzzles or whatever they were. Right. So she was actually still thinking about. She the just game. wasn't doing. I think the the games. Like yeah. I think she was doing those puzzles. That's right? right. But my point here is that in league, I think when you're taking breaks longer than three days, rust builds up incredibly fast. That's what I've noticed anyway from people. So I don't really have an answer when you need to take a three-day break, but I'm sure there are people out there that need to. On the flip side, there are people that definitely don't need to. I've had people in the in my lower goal, below goal program where I'm like, and I've seen them and they're saying, oh, I think I need to take a break. No, you don't need to take a break just because you've had a rough three block. Yeah, right? So you've right. got to be careful here, that's, right? That's, it's like, where, what does plateau mean? Like, what, what does that look right. like for league? I, Curtis, I think a five to seven day break is fine. I really do. I, I mean, I, for me personally, when I went to Perth and mm. that sort of stuff, dude, I came back and all snapping, dude. All like, right. I think it's fine for league. All right. Um, so let's say... Let's say you're like generally... Okay, plateau is when rank. you're at a rank, roughly, for a at month. least a month more, maybe a month or two. I would say like a six... I would say six weeks. Six weeks. I like I think that. six weeks are really good. If yeah. you're at the same rank for six weeks with no real sign of movement... Yeah, you're not seeing any progress. You're not seeing any progress. Chances are you're, you're, in, a, you're in a plateau. Okay. Um, so when she so she came back from that break and then she climbed right to was it seventeen hundred? Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Yep. We'll okay. So this is where it gets interesting. So she got to eighteen hundred, which is the equivalent of like pipe, like plat. Yeah. So mid, plat mid plat. Four, yeah. Mid to low plat. And then, yeah, mid plat. And then she tilted because she was getting too obsessed about the wins, right? She was climbing and she really wanted to get nineteen hundred, right? And then she got close to 1900. She did the old Classico where it's everyone's like, oh my God, I'm so close to my rank. She got too obsessed about like the wins. And then she tilted all the way down from like 1890 something down to 1770 or whatever yep. it was. Now she, we got to remember- used the word. She felt, she, she felt like she was the best. She was on top of the world. League, obviously chess as well, has such a good way of hitting you in the face when you think you've just figured it out. And I want to put this in context here for a second. People might think, you know, they're thinking of that in terms of like the the LP gains, right? You they thinking you plus minus thirty, or whatever. You get. I was looking at it. She was getting plus eights. It's plus minus eight or ten or whatever it might be. So think about that in terms. If you've if you've lost over a hundred, if you lost one hundred and fifty elo, and you're getting plus eights, that is a shit ton of games. Just to give context, how far she tilted down. That's a huge. And that gave her a massive reality check that she needed to really get her process sorted. And she realized she has a lot of things she still didn't know about the game, even though she felt like, oh, the game's so easy. I'm just climbing, winning every game. That's right. And this is where the three blocks come into play. She literally, quote, said this at this stage, this is where she altered her process and would literally play three games. She played three games a, a day, a night or whatever. And then she would, uh, some games she said, if there were mental attacks and even two games. So she literally did like a three block, yep. <laughs> which is crazy to me. It's crazy. Crazy. Just that period of time and just realizing she used the word she started. This is where patience and discipline. She started yeah. being more disciplined with how much time she was playing. She wouldn't yeah. just sit there and she literally said as well, I'm going to play until I can win. Just one more. <laughs> just one more. <laughs> one more in league. Uh, you know, you guys are about to go to bed. You finished three block. Just you went zero more. three. Oh, I just need to get that one game in. And then you played another three games because you're trying to get that LP back. You're chasing the yep. LP. That's right. Touching on um, her, that skyrocket performance mm. from the 1500 to 800, I wrote here that she said she didn't really know. She said that it was probably a lot of factors, but she thinks the biggest one was looking at positions with fresh eyes. And that's the thing about league guys. Like it's so even us as coaches, like I can't really tell you why Ishan, for example, went from plat one to D. He got went from plat one to D2 really quickly. I can't tell. Not even he could tell. Like, Things just start clicking. It's hard, it's so hard to explain in a game like chess with so many variables and like league and stuff like that. So I think I really like that she didn't just come into the video saying, this is exactly what I did. She just, I just don't know what actually happened. Like I took a break and here you go. Maybe it's the fresh eyes. And I think the same applies for league. Sometimes you, again, it's a lot of factors that are all going to be coming together. Things, some, maybe one certain fundamental just clicks. One way about using one ability might click in fights. For example, I'm doing Hecarim right now and, 
I started changing the way I use my ult. I never do short range ults. I only do max range ults. And that's completely changed the way that I'm winning fights. So it's just as simple. Even though you're playing the same game, doing the same thing, fundamentals maybe even improving. Until I knew how to fight that way, I wasn't gonna actually going to get much progress. Yeah, it could just be a bunch of things clicking intuitively. You don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, so, yep, she started being more disciplined. All right, she's talked about here, and this is really interesting in terms of the bracket, especially same with League, when you're starting to get to Platinum Diamond. She mentioned that she realized she's playing too defensive and mm. she's not overwhelming the enemy's mental stack and wasn't an initiator, wasn't aggressive enough. Mm. And this is where we sort of talk about the loser's game and the winner's game, right? Yeah. You can sit back and wait for people to make mistakes. And have good fundamentals. Up until like Platinum 1, which is about the exact same as chess here. And then after that, you need to start being the initiator, being aggressive. You need to get plays. uncomfortable and get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. For laning, you got to start trading and missing CS. Mm. Just trading, heavy trading out of nowhere when the jungler's around. Instead of just sitting there being like, I'm just going to farm, just AFK farm. You're not going to be, you're not going to win consistently that way. So the aggression, she talked about aggressive. She wasn't was aggressive enough. And she like put us, and she, she was, she said that there was another thing there as well. Yeah, she was getting comfortable trading pieces. Games got messier and that she felt like that allowed her to learn faster. Yes. And she seemed to get comfortable in that chaos. And also she said that she would now, she started to learn to play from behind. And like, so before she probably didn't have the confidence to play from behind in these character games. But now she was like down a piece and she would still have the, like keep trying and keep trying to win, which is in my opinion, this is actually something that happens in, the, in our journey. Like you die or something happens, but you now kind of always think about how do I win? How do I win? And you just get, get confident and like mm -hmm. just playing up a play from behind and find creative plays. And that's because your mental stack is freed up and you can really think about what the op opposition is trying to do and think two, interrupt three, their flow, interrupt their flow and think two, three, four steps ahead, you know? It takes time though. That's, I mean, that's as where she's really starting to get quite advanced. This is where I was forcing, she mentioned aggressive sacrifice and forcing the opponent to respond to my threats. Mm. That's when League gets very, very fun. That, I agree, yes. Very, very fun. That's where the mind games, that sort of stuff come yeah. in. All right, so she's now um, closing in on 2000. She's in, guess what? She's hit the promos, guys. The last game. Nerves kick, same as League. Here we go, guys. It's 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 just inevitable, guys. It it really like whenever people say like, how do I deal with promos anxiety? It's like you just gotta just do it a just bunch of it. times. Fail. Just fucking fail. Just you know? fail. And there's no like, secret formula. There's no secret formula. You're gonna get nervous. You're gonna think about it. even if you try. Just have fun, have a crack, and express your best self. That's, that's what right. I say. Um, and then she sort of was really determined and then, um, you know, she eventually got the 2000, yep. uh, 2000 props to her. Uh, Amazing. And I just want to really put this in context. This is the equivalent of someone getting from true beginner in league, like, like level zero to diamond mid diamond in two years. Mm. And especially for a game that's been around forever. It's, it's really incredible. Really, really impressive. You know, think about all the players that you're playing against. And there's so much advance in content. It's way, chess is way more developed in terms of way, content. Way, way, way more. There's like than books, a shit ton of books and courses and heaps of coaches. Incredibly sophisticated. You know, so, you know, if I think about the content available for chess compared to league, like we're probably talking about we're 10% of the way there at the currently, you know? She finished the video saying that it was, you know, just a, just the number of the screen of the day. She sort of, you know, just sort of humble. And she said, but she proved to herself that she put her mind to something. She put in the work. She could achieve something impressive. And yeah. this is just so important for you, us as humans to just know that improvement process works. Being patient, being disciplined with something. Such an important skill that builds confidence really well. Yeah, and props to her. Yeah, I was going to say that as well. The um, the the feeling that she got, she was saying that she just achieved something. And if you can put your mind to something, proving herself that um, anything is possible. That's what it's all about. That's what being human's about in my mind. Yeah. It's just it's just so cool that I just love seeing the video and seeing her like failing and figure things out. And she even like memes like one thing. It's like she's like trying to figure out this really basic move, <laughs> and it's just like she's like question marking on the edit, and it's just so funny. Like. I, the journey the journey is the best part Curtis it's not about the end result it's about the journey the end result's cool pat yourself on the back but because that's something you can talk about it's like a story you know you can refer back to it when things get hard for you later in your life you can think back oh well like I got that end result I, I, this is, I'm in the journey embrace it embrace the journey so I highly recommend anyone who hasn't seen it 
check out this Absolute video. Watches, we'll put the link in the video. description. It's only 20 minutes, guys. It's only 20 minutes. Well definitely worth a great, time. great watch. Because you mentioned before the podcast, uh, you had a question. It's like, why did she plateau at 1500? Same as oh, Lee. Oh, yeah. It's interesting, right? Because 1500 is... That goal, gold. that's where most of the play base and is. And that's where a lo- that's where most of the play base is. And that's where she kind of really I think that's where she had that like plateau point. She had that a lot of doubt. And that's where she's like, well, what do I do? Like this is where she had to really drill down in her process and get uncomfortable. And I think a lot of our clients have really, you know, kind of hit that little goal one or whatever it might be. You know, you're in that high goal, and it's like, well, do I give up and do I just get comfortable being kind of the best of my friends, or do I step outside my comfort zone, really try and get into the details and and refine my process and ask the tough questions and reduce my champ pool and do all these things and then you're there's that crossroad funny it exists in chess as well not only in league yeah it's like that gold low gold to high plat like that's yeah. such a you mentioned before when you first got to plat and you felt so like you exciting. were rocking and rolling like even though you knew you you, know, you had so much to learn you saw potential you saw it's a huge it, it's a huge rank achievement that goal one to p4 for a lot of people it's massive mm. I mean, yeah even for myself it was massive i was so excited when i got platted for the first time like it was like this is just so cool. It felt surreal. And it was like, I, I can keep climbing and it gave me confidence and it just got me excited about trying to get better at league. So, um, it's just so funny. It's the exact yeah. same with chess. Isn't same it? as chess. Yeah. All right. So I think that wraps up there. Uh, I think we've done a good job at breaking that down and you can just get reemphasize in process, discipline, patience guys. All right. Moving into our summoner school post of the week. This is literally the top post of this week with 656 upvotes. The title of this one, Curtis, is people seem to often ask, what do I do when my bot lane loses, my jungle starts flaming, my mid laner won't roam to help, etc." cetera. Uh, so that's the title, moving into the body. You probably lose, that's it. You're not going to have a 100% win rate, especially if you're in a well-established elo, and that's okay in these scenarios where everything is going against you. You just end up losing and go next. You don't need a huge win rate to climb. Just about 50% will do. Sure, if you slap a challenger of Riven one trick in an iron four game, they probably they could probably win with two asks, but that's not going to happen for most people. Just accept that you 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 win some and you lose some. What a great post, Curtis. I love it. I guess this is where we can sort of go on from here, Curtis. Just quality of questions and sort of just thinking about in this league, just some problems are not worth solving. Like, you know, those reviews that we get, like, you know, I like the example of like a challenger play. It's like, maybe you've got one opportunity here. You can come back and win this game, but no, you're not a challenger player. You're not even close to each other. It's not realistic. And that's not what a journey is realistic anyway. Like you don't have to win those games no. to climb. No, you don't. I had a good. review this morning with SLF, uh, Master Tier Akshan player. We did a review and, you know, I'm like, okay, this is good. I'm going through and I'm like, good lane. Okay, this was actually a great reset. You've got a beautiful roam off here. Good, good, good. And it was, it was just one of those games where, you know, he was doing everything right. He was doing, you know, uh, getting bot ganks off but he kept getting bot ganks off playing with his jungler he had a fed nidalee akshan nidalee's mid jungle and then the enemy jungle did a bunch of creative ganks bot uh bot his top was losing to a singe therefore the singe was getting free farm the bot was losing they come into mid game and they're moving to a dragon and then his soraka gets caught and then they just kind of like get aced and i'm like yep 30 percent, move on and I don't think that's what he wanted to hear, but it's like, yeah, yeah, you played this game really well and that's it, mm. you know, and you just got to move on. And, mm. and you know, we could sit here and maybe nitpick and overanalyze, but it's just no point. There's no point. You if know? anything, that's just going to add more confusion, more frustration. And I guarantee you that this game is not the reason you're mastered here. No. I guarantee you that no. there is <laughs> there is probably other games that show this much more clearly. That's going back to the chess video, the skill floor. There's yes. lots of, there's a floor. We need to polish up that floor. Again, more. we're not we're not concerned about pushing up that skill ceiling as much as we are tightening yeah, up. Not the being a challenger player that can win that game. You That's gotta right. be making sure that, you know, the master tier player with the much reducing the skill floor. That's right. And 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 look, you know, maybe if that were a, you know, high challenger player, might might be a little bit diff- a bit of a different story. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's not. So yes, but but it, it's easier said than done. We can all sit here and say, you know, in hindsight, oh yeah, this was not a, a, a game that's winnable. But you know, it's a skill in itself. The the ability to walk away from a tough loss is it's bloody hard. Yes, it is very very very. Especially hard. when you've sweated, dude. You really tried hard to carry that game. 
that those are the games where you can, you can just end your block if you're really yeah you know sometimes you do have to end your block sometimes you have to literally get off the pc walk away mm. or just end your block and there's no shame in that because if you're putting a lot of effort you're doing everything you can and it you and what I say, you know, you make the enemy earn their win. You make them sweat for it. You turn a 15-minute FF game into a 35-minute slog fest and you still lose. It's okay to walk away from the PC and end your block early, right? Occasionally. So there's no shame in that. Um, but it's a skill in itself to be able to walk away and, and really deem that as a 30% loss. The ability to deem something, though, one of those those losses is harder as well. Though. So again, hard, I can yeah. empath empathize with the, uh, yeah. with the general wider community there yeah i just want to just quickly the top comment here which mm. has 260 upvotes is um something this guy he made a guide something about um he uh, what he said in the video is it isn't pretty it isn't flashy it isn't even really that noticeable it's winning game number 17 and game number 55 in a hundred game stretch instead of losing them because your increased skill with the fundamentals was the difference between your team losing and winning it may even be that game number 55. You went 046 instead of 073 or something. You just focused on not dying as much and trying to to have as much numerous impact as you could on the map instead of inting into the enemy over and over trying to catch up again. A two-game swing in 100 games is also actually a four-game swing in LP games. This actually is also very true as well for the, yeah, the new LP system. Again, think about the journey instead of the... I like that, the stretch of 100 games. You know, that let's say that game that the auto loss is game number, you know, 44, but you're straight up into and losing your team on game number, you know, 78 to 93 and uh, 12. And that's now 100 LP. Just that's like that. Ginormous, dude. Three division. games that you, you know, so yeah, the improvement is definitely can be capable, guys. And you're just going to, again, thinking about the journey big picture really important that's actually been the theme that i've been really pushing right now i've gotten so many messages this week from people in the mla san curtis i'm really you know struggling to i'm losing games and i feel like i'm stuck right and the same i keep saying the same boring old message here we go old coach curtis here we go same bullshit for the ten thousandth time curtis give it to us league is solo a marathon not a sprint that's it. It's really that it. And and heart, I feel like for some of these clients, they just need me to say, guys, you know, you can do it, but you got to think big picture. Yep, you had a you had a tough week of solo queue. Okay, what about next week? What about next month? What about the next three months? Right? And it's like, guys, you, yeah, sure, you haven't got to your, you've dropped from D two to D four. So what? Nowadays with the LP games, that's dick all. You can have a great few days and you can easily get back to that rank very, very, very quickly. And what I keep saying is two things. Yeah, League is a, solo queue is not a, a sprint, it's a marathon. And also you got to stop thinking about the rank and think about your in-game decisions. That's right. When you do that, everything becomes clear. Clear. No frustration there. It's just, it's just you can simplify things. Just really simplify it. Really, really, really. Like, okay, I missed. I, I, I should have caught off that dragon. I shouldn't have died to that gank. I should have. I overcommitted to that roam top side. These are the learnings. Is brainwash yourself into really over overemphasize those mistakes yeah. if you have to get into the details. And the game is so much more fun that yes. way as well. The the LP is so boring, dude. Honestly, I just couldn't care less. It's just such a boring aspect If you don't have the, the game. gameplay to back it up, then it's just a number. It, it just means nothing, yeah. It's just a number, right? I mean, it, 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 let's say, you know, for last season, I'm I was Challenger. I'm currently Grandmaster, right? Like, let's look at decisions. My decisions, I'm not scratching my head, guys. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, my journey makes sense. Love it. So move into Curtis Eclipse. Yep. Do you have our intro, your little intro, Curtis? Yet, I keep getting roasted like? and I just keep forgetting, guys. So keep roasting me. I love getting roasted. And three. <laughs> <Just stop. laughs> stop doing that, Curtis. Just stop. We're just going to get okay. into it. Get into Clips. Curtis is Clips going at now. And welcome, everyone, to Curtis's Clip Corner. All right. Welcome to my corner where I uh, educate you guys about some League of Legos. This one is a Casio clip from good old Badook. Congratulations to Badook who recently hit Grandmaster on the European server, killing it. He's got a great mindset right now and I've jinxed you and now you're gonna go back to 100 LP just like that. Anyway, this is a Casio V Vega. Now, um, 
good mistakes. I love great mistakes, Ooh. good quality mistakes. Yes. We talk about good mistakes, Mi- bad mistakes. Mistakes that we can learn from. Yes, that is essentially what a good mistake is. A good mistake is something that we can learn from. Now, I'm just going to play this clip out. I am going to mute the audio. There we go. So he's basically in a 1v1 scenario. He's feeling himself, tries to posture aggressively onto this fire guard, and the enemy support Braum roams towards mid. Now, instead of disengaging, he tries to go for a 1v2, uh, burns his cleanse, and ends up dying in this 1v2 scenario. We came to this clip in uh, the coaching session, and I'm assuming he was expecting I was going to roast him. Gosh darn it, Baduk, this is just disgraceful gameplay. And what I said, I'm like, this is a good mistake. I like it, right? Because what I said, very simply, if you think you can 1v2, you should always go for it. Yep. Why? Because you don't know what you don't know. Now, getting very granular, what can we take away from a clip like this, all right? This is playing with intention. He intentions like, okay, his movement, you can see his movement here. He saw Clearly born. says, I'm going to take this I'm going to turn this around. He could have easily just go. walked out. He had cleanse. Here we he go. Literally just, um, he could have, yeah, easily walked out here. But no, I'm going to try and fight this Braum. And we got into it and it's like, okay, well, what about, because his intuition obviously tells you, your intuition tells you something. Yep. His intuition said, all right, well, I'm, I think I can win this. Yep. And he goes, and I'm like, okay, what did we not take into account? And he said, oh yeah, I didn't take into account that the Braum shield actually blocks the Casio twin fangs, right? So I that, genuinely didn't even know that, by the way. <laughs> right, so it's a very niche, Braum. niche little thing. And then he also yeah. underestimated how much damage Braum did and also Braum has Ignite. Yeah. So he didn't factor in those details. And he's like, great, that's it, move on. That's the learning. There's no shame in that. Yeah, it's a pretty game losing mistake, obviously. Yeah. But you, especially at his level, you know, Master Tier, but even any level, this is what a good quality mistake looks like. If you're making that play with intention, tying back to the chess video with, with that girl who plays chess, the woman who plays chess, playing with intention. He saw the Braum. He's like, you know what? I'm going to turn around. I think I can win this. Right? This is trusting intuition. And this is what will refine your intuition in the long run. Love it. Okay. Very, very simple. Very keeping it simple today. So just because you die, you know, this actually, we actually mentioned this briefly on the last week's episode where, you know, yes, deaths are bad. They're going to lose you games, but it, they're inevitable. They are inevitable. And if he bitched out here, ran away, cleansed thinking, we don't take oh, this I, think, I think I could have, maybe I could have 1v2 that shoulda, coulda, woulda. Mm. Who gives a shit? Mm. If you didn't do it, how are we going to know? Mm. All right. So that's it. For any, anything no, else there? The other thing I want to mention as well, this is why going where where people really just never improve is they have their intuition. Some something gets pinged or some inf, inf, in something happens on the map and then they don't follow their in, intuition. Yeah. Especially as a jungler, mm. stuff like mm. ganks and all that sort of stuff. Like I see it all the time. The biggest one is I'm getting spam pinged to gank. You sort of like see it, but you feel like, oh, I can't tell you exactly why, but in the moment, I know this is going to, we're going to get 2v3, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you, you die, like, there is no learnings there, oh, you know? Like, that is hurt. And that's the hurt, but that's that's why. Yeah, the waste going, of time. You need to follow your intuition, even if it loses you games, because you learn so quickly that and way. This actually reminds me of that segment of the chess part where she said that she wasn't being aggressive enough. So she actively got uncomfortable yep. to you know, to progress, uh, to progress and get out of her comfort zone. Right. Mm. So she actively did that, mm. Mm. which was so cool. Right. Mm. Um, this is exactly what that looks like. This is the league equivalent of that, of, of literally getting outside your comfort zones. If it's, if you think it's remotely possible, do it. And then again, only one way to find out. And then if you do this again and again and again, you're going to thrive in these situations. You're going to get very good in these situations. So that's my takeaway for today's episode, guys. Be unapologetic with your intuition in game. I like it. It's a re- great way to frame it. Right, All that's right. it for the clips corner. Now we go to my and corner. Here's a segue to Nathan. Oh, it's not a corner. It's a mailbag. My mailbag is in a corner. I have to go grab right, it. So we got this. this we've occupied two corners it. of this room. <laughs> Away we go. All right, first uh, one here is more of an update, not a question. We love hearing about success stories and people's journeys. This one's from Zachary. 
Hello, Coach Curtis and Nathan Mott. Zach, again, and I want to let you guys know I just made it to Masters. This has been a really long journey, but I want to make sure everyone knows that it is possible. I was platinum for around five years until I started to watch the podcast. I'm not a talented gamer, but I pride myself on my curiosity and willingness to never give up. The process has been a huge part of my life for the last two years, but finally my work has paid off. What a good segue from our, that story of the girl in chess. It's the exact same thing almost. I'm really grateful that this podcast was able to help me understand how to view the game in a positive light. I learned how to remove all the toxic narratives that every player seems to have. Most importantly, I learned why I play League of Legends and how to gain confidence in myself. So thank you guys for being there uh, every Monday when I felt like giving up. Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. We just need to understand that its results don't come overnight. Thanks again. Let's keep the grind up. Amazing. Thank you so much, Zachary, for sharing that. And that, again, is what the podcast is Hitting all about. home the message, Curtis. Amazing. Um, I mean, we need those messages. We yes. love hearing those messages because there are people out there that, again... Sometimes, in that platinum stage still being there for five sometimes years doubt the process sometimes doubt the time you know not think about the time frame not think about the big picture and sometimes i just need to listen to this podcast and be like okay there what? are people like me that have been stuck at a rank for x amount of years and not talented not talented and is that even possible um amazing so thank you so much for sharing that with us uh, funny uh, one thing i'll say this i had a client recently who reached diamond kaiser and um, he literally said, quote, when he, when he started out his journey, he literally memed, if I get to Diamond, I can quit. I'll quit the game. Like it was that unbelievable in his mind. And he's, he's like, literally, he was like in tears. And because he went he, on his last game, he won. He actually w was the carry. He carried. Like he yeah. wasn't, as ta he wasn't carried. He, he was the carry. It. He earned it. And he literally like, like is in tears during like, as he was finishing his last game. And he actually made it. Like, just think about that for a second. It was so unbelievable that he literally was like, I'm going to quit the game. I'll quit the game if I get diamond. Yeah. It just shows that no matter how hard you think it is, no matter how unlikely you think it is, anyone, like, I, I'm going to say it straight up, anyone can get diamond. Yes. With effort and with process, with, like, getting into those details. With, with the reborn story, Kaiser Zachary here. These are just, again, just a few examples. Next question here comes from Ride or Die. The title of this email is Ego vs. Confidence. Hello, longtime Coach Curtis fan and recent enjoyer of the podcast. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you for inspiring, inspiring me to approach the game in a much healthier way. I've been playing League since Season 4, peaking at Diamond 4 since the removal of Division 5, so it was Diamond 5, Diamond 4. I used to spam games, but I found approaching the game with a different perspective of learning rather than climbing has been great. I follow the three block process and review all my games in my block while setting learning objectives and attempting to eliminate losing habits. This is the low skills mm. for very, again, relevant to this today's episode. Losses don't feel as severe due to the fact I'm solely focused on my impact alone rather than the outcome. Now, my question is ego versus confidence. As stated by both of you, ego can be a very nasty thing in League of Legends and can limit players' learning ability when trying to improve. However, I'm curious on both of your opinions on this matter. Where is the line drawn? What is your interpretation of the differences? How can your clients apply this to their solo queue journey? So ego versus confidence, Curtis. Okay, so... Okay, the way I view it, I'm just a bit born here, at least for me, I, I think that there is a, we all need a healthy dose of confidence, right? Um, and what I mean by healthy dose means we have self-belief. We believe that we can achieve something with time, with effort. doesn't mean we can, we, we, we blindly believe we can achieve anything. It's like, I, it's not like I'm going to say here, I'm going to be an astronaut or something. That's delusional, right? And I think that's where, you know, is that middle ground where it's like, okay, I believe that I can do anything within reason with hard work. Like, I think that's a pretty fair thing to say. Ego, I feel like is where it's unhealthy amounts of confidence in a way. And I, I actually think in it's, it's kind of like uh, infected with the virus of comparison to others um, and actually your insecurity in a way and, um, and like delusion and a lack of curiosity hmm. and a lack of open-mindedness. Hmm. So I think there's an element. Of, so I feel it as like kind of like this umbrella term, right? Of confidence. 
and then there's an umbrella term of ego, right? These are very like big, broad terms in my opinion. But then there's like all these other little small subcategories or other little concepts that we talk about. Um, and then I think uh, like the ones I alluded to before, I don't really, it's a very gray area, isn't it? You need a little bit of both. You need to be humble. You need to be open-minded. Um, you need to be curious. But then if you overthink shit, then you're not going to be as confident. Um, yeah, I don't really have an answer, but that's kind of, I'm just spitballing here. What, what about you? I'm just going to use an anecdote from my journey coming back. Hmm. So for newer people the podcast, my journey was season three, Challenger, season four, season five, Challenger, three years, Run Diables, Curtis was the coach, I was the manager, I didn't play the game for three years, came back 2018, 2019, stuck in Platinum 1, Diamond, Low Diamond, and that was the definition of ego right there. My ego was, is that I was a former Challenger player, <laughs> yeah. all I need is just to spam games, just get the games and get them out, yeah. and I was just missing so much, guys, like, you know, looking back now, like, I actually, I wish I had the VODs, like... <laughs> Like, dude, I must have been missing some big stuff, but I was so blind to it. So when I say, when I think about ego, I think about I'm blind. It's blind. It's a lack I'm, of, I'm, it's a I lack of curiosity. On. Yeah. It's, it's complete blind to, it's, it's, it, you're oblivious and you're delusional. Yes. And you're blind. And, yes. and the opposite of that in order to, and, and what real confidence is, is that you're actually aware and you're open-minded. Yeah. That's what true confidence really is. I was running around thinking I'm a challenger player. <laughs> As a Diamond 4 player, like literally with the 51 Super Mario is Diamond 4. So, um, <laughs> it's just ridiculous when you think about it. It's that. ridiculous, isn't it? But I, but you, if you tell me right then, like even, even then, I think I was at the stage where, I mean, you were telling me every day, like, <laughs> but I, I, I wasn't processing what I was you were literally saying. Telling you every about day. three, like, we were living with each other at that point. Yeah. I, I was like, what are you what doing? Was, what was I doing? I just, like, uh, anyways. Anyways, I learned a lot from that situation, and uh, yeah, and then what I where I moved it to was I I cut the bush, and then I moved it to confidence. Where my confidence was okay, I'm I'm going to accept I'm diamond for now, but I'm confident with effort, process, and time. Time is my best friend. I love time, guys. I will achieve challenger again, and I did. So I think that's literally my dichotomy. I, I have been Nathan Mott Ego. It was kind of like short-term versus long-term thinking as well, wasn't it? Like you were kind of trying to get Challenger now. Yeah, in the short, yes, that's like what it was. Like when you were doing it, it's that's like, okay, ego. I need to get Challenger now. Now, because like I started coaching and I need to be yeah. a certain rank of coach and just for myself personally. Mm, mm. So yeah, it was, it was yeah. The time frame there. My time frame was short, which had big ego as well as comparing myself to before and comparing myself to others. Comparing yourself, yeah, comparing yourself to a previous version of yourself as well. Yes. So yeah, so there's a lot of same terms here. Comparison, cu curiosity, um, delusion, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I think that's where, yeah, the, the ego and the confidence really draw that line. But, uh, you know, I would also say confidence, there is no real way to have true confidence without failure. Like, I, I, that's how I truly feel. Like, I feel like if you don't get punched down, and then bounce back and then, then achieve something through hard work. You're actually, it's actually kind of fake confidence in my opinion. Like, yeah. like, okay. Like again, I'll kind of, we're talking about anecdotes here. When I moved, you know, from Direwolves into doing my YouTube content, I was, I would say I was a, I was not actually an amazing player. Like I had a lot of good understanding, but I was kind of out of touch with the feel of the game because again, I didn't really get to play all that much. And when I was doing a lot of those guides, I was actually more a grandmaster player. Like I would, I would sit low chow and like, I wasn't really a, a great like challenger. I didn't feel like I wasn't, I knew I wasn't a, a great player, but I was so focused on like getting content out. And then, you know, I went through that phase where I'm like, I had to really get my shit together. Cause I, I lost my feel of the game and I was spread myself too thin with too many champions. And then it wasn't until like, I kind of like had that massive setback getting shit on dropped all the way to like 300 LP or whatever it was. And then really had to like get improve my micro, really develop my champ mastery, get into those details, and then push up from there to become like actually I, what I think to be a pretty good player. That's when my true confidence came. I think before then it was kind of like delusion. It was like fake confidence in a way. It wasn't real. Like it was shattered too quickly. But now I, I, I my confidence is hard to really. Yeah. So there's different levels of confidence. There's like yeah. 
short little burst and then confidence it's like your true definition confidence. Now is true confidence is like I'm unshakable yeah I'm basically unshakable because I know that no matter term. what like no matter what happens even if I were to drop now 400 LP i confident that with process with intention like I could get there that's what true confidence is mm. it's true belief in oneself that you can achieve something with hard work in a way um, but it was fake before because I didn't really know exactly what I needed to do. And I never actually done that. I'd actually got back to, the, I was got back to that low child before with just past experience and just game knowledge and just like, you know, whatever you want to call it. Right. Mm. So there's a very big difference there in my opinion. Um, and I think league is a really great tool for developing true confidence because you're forced to earn your rank every season as well and and the, th the game changes so you can't just rest on your laurels because the game is actually changing and everyone around you is getting better so you're forced to grow and you're forced to get better each and every season which is a really good point i think um anything else on ego i think that's a good we've, yeah so like again i don't really we don't really have I don't know if we answered the question per se but we just we've explored this topic in in other episodes i think we literally have an episode called ego versus confidence mm, or, mm. or ego so you can type in just type in broken by concept ego i'm sure one of the old episodes i, I, I want to ask you a question do you think it's possible to have a large ego and be open-minded and curious i think there's a different word for that then i don't think that's what my definition of ego no but like just when you envision someone as egotistical like if you envision my perspective no I don't no you don't think it's possible no I don't think it is either like how does how do you reconcile being egotistical with open mindedness and curiosity no I don't think they I think they're mutu mutually exclusive I think that I mean maybe that person would get results in the show but it will come crashing down very quickly because once once you once the ego gets dismantled that's really big. You know, some people might not be able to recover from that. So I, I feel like that's the antidote. Like really, like if you think about anyone that you believe to be egotistical, you don't, th you don't think of them as open-minded, curious people. No, no. Right. But conversely, the people that are open-minded, curious, you, they typically pretty humble and they're not really egotistical. So yeah, it gets you thinking. Maybe that is the key to success there, to, to breaking the ego, being open-minded. But that's, easy, again, easier said than done. And that's through failure. And that's where we talk about hitting rock bottom, right? If you want to break that ego and you feel like you're a hyper-egotistical player and you feel like that's to a detriment, then you need to keep going, fail, hit rock bottom, and then try and work your way out of that. Yeah. Try doing that without being open-minded and curious and you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I Until I hit rock bottom with my journey... My reality check. I I was never gonna. Yeah, progress. you were never gonna. Yeah, you had to do in for you. You had to do those a thousand pissed away a thousand games. Yes, because if you didn't, you There's always no would have thought that oh, I could just play games and get. Because that's what that is actually what a lot of people do. They have that in the back of their mind where it's like I could always just sit there and play a thousand games and I'll get any, I'll get any rank that I want. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what that's how people genuinely think. They mm -hmm. they hide behind the that 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 I guess delusion of um if i would just get a, a bulk amount of games if i played as much as that guy i would easily get that rank it's like that's like that in a narrative right and that holds people back from really being open-minded because that's the that's that knot in the back of their their mind that they can't break and then until you do that you do you start playing and you start getting those hundreds and hundreds of games in and your rank's not going in and you're not getting better at the game Oh shit! Yeah, that's when reality hits. That's I, where. That's where. Then th that mindset that, of just play more is no longer working. That's no longer working. So you don't have that protection mechanism no. anymore. That's a defense. It is an ego protection mechanism. Yes. Because when you think about, it, last thing I'll say here is that an ego is propped up by narratives. That's what an, an ego. That's what it really is. An ego, in a way, when when I the way I perceive it, it's like a, it's a it's a defense mechanism. An ego really is right. And there are narratives that support that ego, right? These beliefs that have stemmed from however young you were, right? And, and things that have been reinforced in you. I've spoken about this many times where I believe that everything was talent and, you know, there was no such thing as just, you know, getting really, really good at something or having a process. Um, and I was, a, I just thought it was just like, yeah, insane hands or whatever it might be. And there was like these narratives that were built up through years or if something's too hard, just don't do it. That's not you. That's not for you, right? There was no such thing as overcoming adversity like that, right? So there was like these narratives that prop up kind of this defense mechanism that kind of shield your, I guess, your your image of yourself. And then that's what you need to break. You need to break those narratives in order to kind of break the ego down and then gain true confidence in a way. Yep. <laughs> I like it. 
<laughs> I have nothing more to add. All right. I'm just thinking about my journey, dude. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. dude, I was just. I, we get it, Nathan. We all go. We got to. I we all, hit rock bottom. Yeah, we'll dude. start somewhere. That was again. That was end of what 2020. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, end of 2020. As, no, it was end of 2019, wasn't it? Well, 2019. That was in. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was. It was, the, the, it was like when, when it really happened. started, right? Yeah. And, and I then, hit rock bottom at the end of 2020. So it was like a year, essentially. Of yeah. Just yeah. About two years. Yeah. Two years. Uh, he says here bonus question saying, uh, Nathan, you're a supporter of low intensity count. Could you elaborate on why you support this? Please do this, Nathan, because there are people in my program. They always keep asking. <laughs> well, so I, I mentioned this on the episode about how I got challenged last, last year, right? So I had two accounts, one low intensity, one high intensity. And there's two ways that I thought about it. So the reason that I came up with it is because I wanted to play more League of Legends. I love playing League of Legends and I wanted to play at night when I knew I wasn't at my focus. So my mindset was, I want to play League. I don't want to lose LP on my main. So I'm going to play my low intensity because I want to play. Um, and the other second reason is that I sort of like thought about it as, let's say use UFC as an analogy. I'm like practicing, I'm sparring. I'm drilling. Drilling and then... I'm playing my main games when I'm most focused, ready in the in the combat in the arena, and that was my period of uh, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and that's where I gained all my elo. That's where I I was performing at my best. Okay, but I wanted to play from 5 a.m. to 10 p- 8 p.m. as well, and then that's where my low intensity count came in. So when okay. I say low intensity, I think it's purely just because of my time, how focused I was during the certain parts of the day. Okay. And, you know, that's what a process is all about. It, you you got to find if it works for you. If it works for you, it works for you. Yep. It never really doesn't resonate with me. But on this on this topic, though, um, talking about processes, Nathan, we talk a lot about the, the significance of staying with a champ pool, okay? And we all get distracted, right, by metas. You get beaten by a champion. You get countered by something, and you want to play it. You want to play that champ, or you want to you wanna change your champ pool when, when things don't go right. Someone from the MLS had a genius idea that's really been working for them so far, which is, okay, they have their main champion. They stick to their champ pool on their, on their main champ, on their main account with their, their, their pool. Then they have, anytime they get an inkling, if they want to play a champion or they, they get beaten by something and that frustrates them and they want to like maybe play that champion or something, they go and play normal games with those champions. Play them. Mm. On normal games, after your block, after your block's done, go play all those random champions. Play those ten games of random echo that you got frustrated. Play those ten games of Zed. Play those ten games of LeBlanc. Play all the literally. If you get that feeling, do it on in a normal game. And what you what this what this uh, does? It actually does two things. It gets it out of your system because then you'll start to see the weaknesses of the champion as well. Yes. Without sabotaging your rank and you, and you, you still got your main pool there. But number two, it actually allows you to learn about these champions because often we get beaten by things because we don't actually understand the kit or how it works. So it actually kill two, kills two, uh, two birds with one stone there. You're actually, you know, satiating that urge, but you're also learning about the game kind of intuitively. Like, oh, that's 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 what the cooldown of LeBlanc W is. Oh, interesting. Oh shit, it's actually quite important to land that chain or whatever the hell it might be. And then you can get the get the feeling of it by playing it. So I think that's a really awesome um, little tidbit there. So you know, rather than playing ranked on the you know, play norms of champs that you want to dick around with. Yep, that's a cool another process. I like it. So yeah, that's my explanation for uh, that. But I think again, you can revisit why we broke. I think our episode title was "Why We Both Got Challenger Broken by Concept," and that was last year. I, right. I, I go more in detail about my two account process thing there. All right, our last question here comes from Hex Ames. Title of this email is "Tilting Over LP Gains." Hello, coaches Nathan and Curtis. For starters, I played the game on and off since Aatrox was first released. So we're talking, when was Aatrox released, Curtis? 2013? Nah, I don't know. So this guy's like played for 10 years, something like that. Yeah. Predominantly a console player as I never had a PC set up other than a basic laptop. At the start of this year, I finally put the funds to getting a very capable PC to play League. In previous seasons, I played ranked with friends, but this current season is my first time taking it seriously. Also my first season as a jungle and loving it so far. Actually, just going back to the ego, this this has not got nothing to do with the email. (laughs) That's actually another narrative, really big one that people have is that I 
I don't, I've never actually played ranked seriously. Right. Yeah. And that's where an, the ego comes from as well. It's yep. like, I'm, if not, I took I'm, it I'm seriously. not playing seriously. It's like, I could win this game, but I'm not going to take it seriously. That's a defense mechanism. So, because if you try and you fail, that breaks down your ego. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. And we see that we actually, I think that's extremely common by the way, in, um, in the high elo brackets. Yes. You see it a lot with like master players and mm. stuff like that. Um, yeah. Very, very common. So he started in bronze four and has climbed to silver three, uh, 135 games. However, the problem that I'm having is that my LP gains are horrible. Plus 12, minus 18. Uh, sorry, he's, he win, when he wins, he gets about 12 to 18. And when he loses, he gets 20, he loses 26. Okay. Guessing because of my past ranks being bronze has made my MMR shit. Even when I go even or carry my lobbies up around my rank, but rarely do I get higher lobbies uh, than silver one. Maybe get a silver two here and there. I predominantly play solo. I get tilted because it feels like if I win two and lose one, I completely negate my two wins with a, you know, he's every for every time he wins a game is the equivalent to, so every, every, every two wins, he, he loses one, he's at the same rank. What would you suggest me do? duo with a higher rank to get better lobbies or just deal with the game loss and try to push through thanks for advice thanks for an advance for the advice love the show and i'm currently on the wait list for the soul to academy awesome uh well so we've talked before about mm. this is a i actually have had someone recently in soul to uh say thank you to me about breaking a a a unfixable account he's fixed it He's fixed it. It's fixed. It's, it's something I think everyone needs to do in their journey just to break that narrative. It's like, if my MMR becomes really bad, if I just play well and win games, you fix your goddamn... That's just the way that the game works. And it's just going back to focusing on decision-making, going back to what you mentioned you know, before about it's just more fun t- to focus on the decision-making, getting the details, champ mastery, all that stuff, than looking at the LP. Uh, so, but I, I, I have had success with people starting new accounts you know yeah it, 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 again both can work but what that we've said this before again the dangers of starting a new account can be quite yes yes in the long yeah. run because, because then the next time you screw your account mm, again what's the solution i've started a new account yes and objectively, it could be a cycle okay if we're being objective about what is the best for short-term lp it is make a new account and buy a new account whatever you need to do right um at the end of the day I like you said, I do think everyone needs to fix an account at least once, once to just make sure that narrative is gone. But you know, the way I view it, this is like the way I really view it. If you, the, the, the system is very sophisticated. It wants you to prove that you're worth the climb. Like if you were in bronze, right? For an extended period of time, it wants you to earn your climb. Like the system is thinking, wait, what the hell? This guy's winning all the time. We Let's should double just check double that. Double check that. Let's double That's check right. that. Is that guy really a gold player? You yeah. know? And so it wants to keep you around for a little bit just to check. And then if you keep going 2 1, 2 1, 2 1, 2 1 in all your blocks, you will get out of it yes. and you'll be smooth sailing, yes. right? Now, that's obviously. But you can view that in a positive light. Well, so I get more reps in with lower quality opponents. I should be able to be stomping them in a way. If you think you're that much better than your rank, you should be beating them pretty reliably and winning, at least going 2 1 in your blocks. Then, you know, it shouldn't be that long so it's really not that long no my not. when going back to my anecdote when i had my whole ego trip and that sort of stuff i was diamond four playing in platinum two lobbies you had the worst of i've probably ever seen yeah when and i in th- when i started doing focus process getting into the details accepting my level of play as a diamond four player i got to master tier zero p finished that season it's on my opgg on nathan mott season 20 20 um, season 10, I finished Master Zero LP and I fixed that in about a month and I was winning most of my games. And that account is my main account now. You know, that's like, you know, since 700 LP. So yes, I, 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 my advice is 100%. You've got to fix the account. But I think, you know, what I would probably recommend is that, okay, I'm not going to say I recommend it, but I think once you've done that whole fixed MMR account um, once, you know, I don't think you need it maybe every time, maybe. Um but I, again, I've, I've, just, I've just don't resonate with that. I've never really, I, I can't really get, that's why I don't feel comfortable giving advice for this because I've never been in that situation. Yeah. Mm. Like I've never been in that situation personally. And I've never thought of it like that. I've always thought if I've had a 50% win rate, that's just it. That's just where I'm at. And if I'm getting low gains, I deserve to get low gains and I, I want to earn my high gains. You know, it's really that simple for me. Um, 
So yeah, I, personally, I've really struggled to give that advice. Yeah. But absolutely don't duo. Yes, don't do that. It's the worst that you could do. All right. That's it for our episode today, Curtis. Good work, guys. Let's keep on improving. Chugging along. Chugging along. Process. Block. Really cool story today from that video. Well, there'll be a link in the description for that video yep. as well. The Chess 2000 ELO in two years. We'll see you next time.